Okay, so uh, good evening. As I mentioned uh, last class, I'll go a little over time today. I want to complete up to the signed multiplier. Okay, so I'll have to cover three topics. Okay, I think normally I would have covered two. I'll just take a little bit of extra time, maybe 20 minutes extra time to go and finish the third topic. Okay, and after today's class, you should be uh, all set to finish the next assignment also, right? You, you should have all the information. You can go ahead implement, do DRC, LBS, layout, everything. Okay, so that's the aim of today's class. So please pardon me. I'll go over time a little bit. Hopefully, I won't have to take an extra class. Okay, somewhere. That's the that's the aim. And before I start, uh, our friend has lost an iPad in this class last time, a month. So. If someone is playing a prank, please return it. Okay. He is desperately looking for it and we are not able to locate it. Okay. So, if you find it or if you, you know, saw someone playing a prank with it or something, then please come up and just tell him right now. Okay. Because yeah, he has a lot of information in it and of course, it is also very expensive. Okay. okay. So, uh, with that, let us get started. So, in the last class, we covered all the theory behind signed arithmetic, right? How to do, how to deal with two's complement numbers, how to deal with, uh, you know, sign extension of two's complement number. Then we looked at some examples of how you can do multiplication of two signed numbers, right? And where if you do not do sign extension properly, you will not get the answer correctly. Then also the final carry out that you get from the circuit right from this multiplication should be used to propagate as many sign extension bits as you want okay that is the use of the carry out in a signed multiplier in an unsigned multiplier the carry out forms the most significant bit in a signed multiplier the carry out is not the most significant bit it is only to help you do sign extension to as many bits as you want okay and keep the answer consistent this is a very key difference between the two multipliers so very obviously the way you do sign multiplication and the way you do unsigned multiplication are very different which means that if i give you an n bit number unless i tell you whether this is a signed representation or an unsigned representation you cannot perform the multiplication and that's why in your microprocessor you have two different instructions called mul and imul Right, if you take the x86 architecture, there is mul and i mul. One is signed multiplication, the other is unsigned multiplication. Okay, and today we will see why that hardware also has to be different and how it has to be different. Okay, okay, so let us start of an array multiplier. As the name suggests, what am I going to create an array of full adders basically, right? So, let us take a simple example x3, x2, x1, x0, y3, y2, y1, y0, right? So, if you look at the partial products, it will be like this x1, y0, x2, y0 x3 why not then i am going to shift and add okay so what is this it is x0 y1 x1 y1 x2 y1 x3 y1 okay then again another shift it is x0 y2 x1 y2 x2 y2 and x3 y3 finally you do one more shift and add and what will you get you will get x0 y3 sorry x1 y3 x2 y3 and x3 y3 Okay, what is this by the way? This is basically x into y. 
right and if we are going to write y as uh, you know the in the binary representation it is 2 power j into yj right j equal to 0 to n minus 1 right so if i write this as it will if i write expand it it will basically be y naught into x plus 2x into y1 plus 4x into y2 plus 8x into y3 that's what this shifting operation is this is basically x y naught x times y naught this shift and add is basically 2x times y1 this is 4x times y2 and 8x times y3 okay this is the shifting and adding part that we are doing here so now my uh, task is to basically place full adders so that i can accomplish this task okay so that's okay i can keep the multiplier there so now you should tell me what these blocks are okay whether these are half adders or full adders and how do i cascade them how do i connect them so this is z0 z1 z2 z3 z4 z5 z6 and i have a z7 also So you have to tell me where these z0 to z7 variables are going to come out of this circuit and what these individual blocks are okay clearly these are AND gates and they are creating my partial products x0 for example this is what x0 y0 yeah and this is x1 y0 x2 y0 x3 y0 and so on right so first of all where is z0 this is z0 okay now i need to perform which one this addition x1 y0 plus x0 y1 so what block should that be half adder basically because there is no carry right half adder what about the other adders on that same row they are all so for example you have to perform um, x2 y0 right and uh, x1 y1 right this this block if you look at it this is what we are performing here so that will also be a half adder right so everything here will be a half adder okay so you add these two numbers x1 y0 x0 y1 you will get a carry right that carry is now going to propagate from this red to this blue block correct because I need to add it to my next set of terms correct so what will be the carry out direction okay assume that my half adder block is like this okay it takes a b c in gives c out and sum sorry full adder okay half adder is you just ground that there that's all there is no c in so what is the direction of flow for the carry out on the first row right so what we are doing is we are taking this carry propagating then we add those three numbers we will propagate like this correct or not even those three numbers i am adding those two numbers and then propagating correct So first of all can that be a full half adder at all in the way I am showing you here 
Why? Because I am propagating the carry. Therefore, this has to be a, these blocks have to be full adders. Right? And I am going to propagate my carry like this. Okay? Now, where is, what is the output of this half adder in red? That is nothing but Z1, right? So, this is going to be my Z1. Which one? The, the final one can be because there is no other term coming in. That is also true. Very good. Okay? So, this can be a half adder. Correct, no? He is right because there is no other term coming there. Okay. So, now what about row 2? So, the first full adder in blue, right, this guy, what did we do? We basically added x2 y0 with x1 y1 and propagated the carry. What about that sum? That should get added to x0 y2, correct? So, therefore, the sum has to propagate like this, correct? Now, what is the, is there a third input to this block? Yeah, that is a good point. True. No, it is not actually more adders. I will come to that. That is No, no, the aim is not to reduce the number of adders. The aim is to do it as fast as possible. So, we will come to that. It turns out that by doing what you said, you will actually speed it up by putting in more adders. I will come to that. That is the next architecture. Why not? Because I get x1, y0 x0 y1 I get a carry right I am going to add that carry here right so basically I am adding these three numbers no no again the carry right from each addition that I get I get a carry out I have to take it to the next stage No, the sum, the carry always goes to the higher bit. It goes to the 2 power 1 into something plus the sum. The carry does not affect the sum. That goes to the next bit. Correct. Correct. That will not affect the value of Z2 is what I am saying. Because the carry is going to the higher bit. See, this is 2 power 0 into Z0 is the coefficient of 2 power 0. Z2 is the coefficient of 2 power 2. Right? That carry that comes out of the addition of X2, Y0, X1, Y1 and the carry is actually going to 2 power 3. So, therefore, it will not affect this Z2 which is the coefficient of 2 power 2. Okay, so maybe, see the carry might be 0, which is fine. But if the carry is 1, then it has to go to the next one, right? Functionally, this is fine. 
it turns out it is a different thing that timing wise it may not be very efficient. Okay. So, let us proceed we will come back to your doubt if it still exists after some time. Okay. So, now the second block right again here the sum has to basically come down correct. So, what about the second block? What should that be the first one? Half adder again, right? This is a half adder. This one, full adder, full adder, half adder, right? We have to be careful here, okay? For now, we will keep it as half adder. The last stage again, half adder, full adder, sorry, full adder and half adder by the same logic. Correct. So, now what happens to the carry propagation again here? It is going to go like this. Right. And of course, the sum has just come down like that. Okay. So, what is this term here? Z2. This is Z3. Z4, Z5, Z6, right. Now, what happened to the carry out from those cor left corner half adders? I am adding X3, Y1 here, X3, Y1 with the carry from the X3, Y0, X2, X2, Y1 term, there is a carry out coming. I add those two terms, where does that carry go? Ah, so, that has to come here. So, now can this be a full half adder? So, it has to become a full adder. What is the term we are missing now? Z7. Z7 that is coming out from the last full adder there, right. So, this basically tells you how to line up array of <coughs> half uh, full adders, right. Even the half adder I can consider as a full adder, right. When you are trying to make an array structure, you do not optimize on that area there. You take a full adder and repeat it. I am just calling it half adder full adder so that it makes it more clear, okay. Otherwise, they are basically just full adders. So, in order to perform 4 cross 4 multiplication, how many half adders or full adders do I need? Yeah, n into n minus 1, right. So, therefore, you need n into n minus 1 full adders effectively, right. 